PPMN stands for Business Process Model and Notation. And really what it is is it's a standard way to visually depict a business process. And so before BPMN, there was really no common language to express visually a business process. All of the various tools used different icons to mean the same thing. The idea behind BPMN is to create a standard. No matter what tool you work in, and no matter who models the process, it can universally be understood by anybody that understands BPMN. So it's a great way to standardize on how we visualize processes. First, the foundation of all BPMN maps are swim lanes and pools. And what swim lanes and pools allow us to do is define the participants of the process. And so what we can see here is in my map, I have one pool. And then in that pool, I have two swim lanes. One lane that represents activities that will occur in the finance department, and another lane that represents the activities that will happen in a cost center. Let's take a look at an example of how we might use swim lane and pools. If I were to create an employee onboard process, if I were going to model that, the first thing that I would do is I would create a pool to represent the company. There's only one company involved. Let's say if I were modeling something like a bank interaction with a consumer or something like that, I might use two pools to represent that interaction. But in this case, I'll have one pool to represent my company, and then in it, I would have multiple swim lanes that would represent, uh, let's say, the HR department, the hiring manager, facilities, the IT department, and my employee. And then as I represent the various tasks and activities that would occur, within this process, I could show how the movement of this information flows between these various organizations. So that's what swim lanes and pools let us do, just visually depict the way work and information moves between participants in the process. Once we've established the basis of our map, then we would begin to add the key elements into it. And those elements consist of the following things. Events, and events are represented by circles. So you can see I have a start event and an end event. And again, we could put these events anywhere in the process. So you could actually have an event that occurs in the middle of a process. The next would be activities. And activities are the things you do. And they're represented by rounded corner rectangles. You can see in our map we have two tasks. And we also have a activity that has a plus sign, so it doesn't actually have text. This might be, for example, if this were an AP invoice process, this task might be AP clerk encodes in, and this task might be finance department pays invoice. This task, because it shows a plus sign, is a subprocess, and what it's indicating to us is that inside of this subprocess are actually other independent tasks. In our little scenario here, if this were an AP process, this might be the approval activity. And that approval activity might require multiple people or multiple tasks to perform that approval. The next type of major element we have are gateways. And gateways are represented by diamonds, and they control the flow of information through our map. If you think about um, a switch, like uh, in a railroad, where you hit the switch and it could drive the train down one track or another, a gateway is the same concept. Information flows into the gateway, in this case our invoice that's being processed, and based on the amount, the gateway determines that and then says, well, if it's over a certain amount, I'll send it to be approved, and if it's under a certain amount, I'll send it to be paid it acts like a switch or a flow control in our map or a decision point. The next major type of item is artifacts, and artifacts really are just ways to help you visually improve uh, the, the annotation of the process or just a way to make it easier for people to understand. I have an annotation here. It's a text annotation. And I would use it, for example, to describe perhaps the activities that are happening in that subprocess. And what you also notice about our annotation is that it's connected by a dotted line. 
Solid lines represent the flow or directional flow through our map. Dotted lines represent just associations. This annotation is associated to this subprocess, so it has no bearing on the flow of the map. And then the last element I'll talk about is data. Generally speaking, when we're going to be processing things, we're dealing with data or documents or other types of information, and so we can represent those in our map. In this scenario, perhaps there is an association to this document, maybe that's our invoice, that starts the process. And then at this task where the AP clerk is entering information, they're actually entering that information into our ERP system, our database. And you'll also notice that this dotted line has an arrow, and what that's showing is that this is a message flow. So we have a message occurring between these two elements. And those are really all the basic elements of BPMN.